Hello, I'm Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. I'm going to demonstrate how to cut your binding on the bias. Now before we get started, let's have my cameraman come in real close here. And this is a summary of the instructions on how to do it. So if you've never done it before, take a quick, quick little picture with your cell phone. Just put the video on pause and take a snapshot real quick. Okay? All right, now let's talk about how to prepare your fabric before you start cutting on it. Really important. You need to pre-wash all of your cotton fabrics for two reasons. Number one, it will shrink because it's cotton. Number two, if you're using really dark fabrics and you're sewing them to a really light fabric and you didn't pre-wash it, those fabrics, those colors will run onto the light fabric and your project will not look very good. So save yourself a lot of heartache, pre-wash it first. Before you pre-wash it, you wanna take that cut edge that they did when they cut it off the bolt, do a little zigzag stitch real quick across both ends of that fabric. Then when you're done, you wanna fold it back like it was on the bolt. Now remember, you have your selvage edge, which is the finished edge of the fabric. Bring those selvage edges together, okay? And make sure you press your fabric as smooth as possible before you start cutting into it. Okay, now I want to show you some samples of some little drink coasters. So before I get into the grains of the fabric, I want you to understand why you need to pay attention to the grains. This little drink coaster was sewn with straight grain bias, okay? Now, binding. Now you will notice that the edges are curling up here and there's little tucks in here. Now if I tried to stretch this binding to get the tucks out, these edges will curl up even more. So look at the back. And it's got all kinds of tucks on it. It doesn't lay very smooth. This will never lay flat flat. It doesn't matter how many times you press it, it's not gonna lay flat. Now here's one where the binding was cut on the bias. There are no tucks on the front and none on the back. So see what this looks like? And then flip them over. This one actually looks bigger than that one. That's because this one's laying flat. Okay, so now you know why you need to pay attention to how to cut out your bias. Now, I'm gonna go over the grains of the fabric. This is a straight grain going from selvage edge to folded edge. And going from your cut edges across this way or along the selvage direction is also a straight grain. Going on a diagonal this way is cutting on the bias on a 45 degree angle. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I want you to look at your ruler that you have, okay? And I want you to look, at, usually at one end, you're gonna have these diagonal lines here. This is a 30 degree line, a 45, and a 60. For your bias cut, you want to focus on that 45 degree line. And you're going to take this line and you're going to line it up on the selvage edge of your fabric. If you are left handed, put a little sticky note right there on that side. If you're right handed, put it on this side. Now why would I worry about left and right? I'm a lefty and I always have to reverse everything that I do. So in your case you get to reverse everything that I do this time. It's not that hard, okay? Alright, so you're going to take your ruler and line it up on the bite, line it up on the selvage edge here, okay? on your selvage edge. So take that degree line, 45 degree, and line it up. Then take your rotary cutter and you're gonna cut along that edge, okay?
Okay, now take this piece of fabric and put it aside for another project. Now you've got a raw edge here. You're going to take one of these lines on here, whatever you're trying to make, you're going to determine a certain width. My binding that I use on quilts and pot holders and another variety of things, I make it two and three quarters. So I'm going to line it up to two and three quarters on this line here. Okay? I'm going to put my glasses on because I'm kind of blind. All right, two and three quarters. And then you're going to cut again this strip and keep cutting and go all the way. You might have to adjust your ruler and lift it up and bring it along okay, up there so you can finish it off and then finish cutting. And if you run into the uh, fold line like I did let me cut this off. You can just cut that end off. Okay, now you have two pieces of binding. Okay, let me cut this little tail off there. There we go. Okay, now you want to make sure you cut these little selvages off. So I'm going to put my ruler on there because you don't want to use the selvage in your project. Cut that off. Okay, now, you now have two pieces of binding. Now your instincts are, let me bring it over here for my cameraman because he gets mad when I get off center. Okay, so here we go. Your instincts are, are to bring the right sides together like this, okay? And then stitch it together and do a seam or do a um, quarter inch seam right here. So let me show you a sample of what I did on one. So I turned right sides together like this, okay, and I stitched a quarter of an inch seam. Now when I unfold this, I'm expecting to have one long strip. And watch what happens. I don't. Okay, so you don't want to lick, have it cut like that because you wound up with a mitered corner and it's not going to do you any good when it's like this. So let me show you what you need to do. You're going to need to turn both of your strips right side up like this, okay? You see this? You're going to need to cut this strip to be on the same diagonal as this one. So take a 45 degree ruler. I have a smaller one because usually for little cuts like this it's easier to use the smaller one. Here's my 45 degree line and I'm going to line it up on this edge here. Okay. And then you're going to do a cut. All right. And just throw that piece away. Now you're going to bring right sides together. So you're going to take this strip here, let me get this out of the way, and you're going to lay it over like this. Okay, you want to make sure you have a quarter of an inch tail on this side as well as on this side. So let me show you a sample of one I've already done so you can get a better idea. Okay, so here's my quarter inch tail right there and now when I unfold it, watch what happens. You now have one long strip. See this? So this is the correct way to do it. Now after you've done this, you want to take your long strips of binding that you've just sewn together and press this seam open and then also make sure you cut off those little tails that were there. Then fold it in half and press it. Okay? So, there you've got one long strip 
of bias cut binding. So I hope this was helpful to you. Now I will be using bias cut binding in the future on some more videos such as how to make a round pot holder and how to make piping because many times when you make piping and you're going to put it on something round you're going to need to have bias cut binding on it all also. So to keep informed on all my future videos as they come out click on subscribe on a PC, it's usually down in your bottom left corner of your YouTube screen, just below the screen. You click on the word subscribe. If it's on your iPad, I think it's somewhere else, maybe up at the top. You click on that and YouTube will ask you if you want to receive an email notification. Say yes, enter your email address, and then YouTube will send you an email with a big button in the center and you click on that and it takes you directly to my latest video. I'm Cheryl. I'm glad you came to my sewing room. See you next time and happy sewing.